Hello and welcome to another video uh, for the Hoylake Computer Club. This is Tom and I'm at the Hoylake Computer Club. We're going to be trying to install Jeff. Uh, that's Jeff spelled G-E-F. So Jeff is a um, an assisting sort of script for GDB to help you when you're doing reverse engineering. So if I go and look for G-E-F, GitHub, GDB, or even just Jeff GDB, we should find their actual GitHub repository, and then there's, a, there's some extra stuff and some other things, and there's like a read the docs thing there as well, which is quite nice with a lot of features. We can look at the features, and then we've got the actual thing itself. So, if you'll see it, GEF pronounced Jeff is a set of commands for x86 slash 64 arms mips power pc and spark to assist exploit developers and reverse engineers when using old school gdb so when you say old school that, i don't know gdb is just gdb to me so there's a few ways of installing it you can use bash you can use uh use bash and curl you can use bash and wget you can manually install it or you can actually run some stuff inside gdb to actually import it and do it so for now, I'm just going to grab the first one, the bash C URL, and it will just kind of run a script and kind of set everything up for us. This is this is fairly straightforward to do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste that, press enter, and then hopefully it won't error. <laughs> we'll see. Let's see how this is doing. It's taking a little while actually. It's usually a bit quicker than that. Ah, oh, there we go. Right, so now if I do an ls al, if we take a look a little bit, we've got, um, we should have, yeah, a GDB in it and a, and a Jeff with some sort of a um, hash. So basically, that is the actual kind of file that we're using, the Python file, and GDB in it happens every time we run GDB. So now instead of the standard GDB prompt when we run GDB, we should get there we go, we've got Jeff. Jeff for Linux ready. Type Jeff to start. Uh, Jeff config to configure. There's 89 commands loaded and five function added to GDB. So it's it's added that. It's using a uh, Python 3.9 engine. It just means that we've got a lot more um, usability of this. It's got a much nicer interface when you're actually doing your debugging and you're able to kind of do a lot of exploit development and reverse engineering and everything on this. It's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's, there, there are other ones to actually use. Um, actually, yeah, look, there's the latest uh, documentation. So, so there are other ones to use, but I, I quite like this one. There's, uh, I think there's sort of like PEDAS or something. I, I don't really use any of the other ones myself. But there are other ones. And you can kind of like go and sort of like play with the stuff and have have a good read of this. I'll, I'll link the uh, docs and the um, GitHub into the description. Again, this was a fairly quick one, there wasn't much to it. Um, I don't think I've got any unstripped um, binary, so we can't really do much to look at stuff. I suppose maybe just, I'll tell you, I'm going to pause and I'm going to see if I've got any uh, simple applications I can write to just quickly test this with. I'll see in a second. Okay, so I think what I'll probably do is I'll quit out of this for a moment. Let's run Vim. Let's just do a hello world program or something. Um, Hello.c. Why not? And we'll just include std io.h we'll do it in main we won't even bother with the args for now printf hello gdb Okay, so now the really, really simple basic program. The 
canonical sort of hello world. So now we'll run GCC, tell it to have uh, debug symbols, and output hello, and we're using hello.c. So now so we've got hello, I can do dot slash hello, and it runs. But we can also do gdb hello, and start debugging it. It's reading the symbols from hello. Yeah. So let's imagine we want to, uh, let's say, um, say we want to like list symbols or something, maybe. Um, imagine we want like uh, GDB to give us like a list of all of the functions in a program, perhaps, or something like that. So we can grab all the symbols, like the symbol table. Um, we should be able to do something like info functions. Let's see what it gives us. Here we go. Here's all the different functions we've got in it. Puts, which is actually to put string onto the screen. A start. Uh, register and stuff. No, so we don't have a like main. Yeah. So these are like non debugging symbols. So in theory, we could jump to start maybe. So we could say like, um, should we try and seek to start or or should we put a breakpoint at start? What do you reckon? Let's think. Yeah, let's put a breakpoint at start, I think. Let's do um I think we should just be able to do a B, shouldn't we, or a BP? So we should. We can do a named breakpoint at a certain address, I suppose. If we do like an NB. Um, and then literally give it the name, start, and then give it the address of whatever the address is, the start address here. Let's copy that. Oops, not control V, control shift V. Function not defined. Okay. Can I just do there we go. That's why I put too many zeros on there, it just one is zero X one fifty. So we've got a couple of breakpoints here. So now, in theory, if we go run, it started the program and it broke at start. Yeah? So basically now, notice how we've got all this information here. This is the memory layout. We've got the name of the program. We've got the fact that we're in start. The reason why we stopped here is the breakpoint that we gave it. So let's, let's do... Um, information again so what can we do let's do step instruction so we step forward a little bit step forward let's do a step so now we've hit the lib gc it's uh, lib c start main so here's where it's calling start of our main function so start is just the entry point for the any any given thing now it says lib c start main so now we're actually going into the main function so I'm going to step in there. Now we've carried on until it's got inside the main. Notice how now we can even see this printf. <clears throat> because we did it with the G, uh, um, it allowed us to show the source because we've got the source available. So even though it's in main, main zero is where, where literally we have this in main. Main one is the setting up of all of the arguments. So if we passed it some arguments, it will be moving stack point to keep any variables in there and stuff like that. So it's load effective address and just setting up the stack ready to hold any variables. Then it's calling puts. So it's setting up all the bits and pieces it needs to do that puts. Yeah. And then it's literally calling the actual library function puts. Then it's Moving zero into AX, which is our return, the return value. 
yeah then it's getting rid of this call stack here and returning so it's returning the zero basically at the end and it's just finished it pads out with a knot because it, it's kind of byte aligned so in essence if we do another step we we've we've done the printf that's fine it's, it's ran through the stripped out of the printf yeah so we've done a single step uh, and the next thing to do is the return so if we step the return we're now pretty much done we, we've hit it we, we've we've done our single step we, we've now finished our libc start main i can just press c to continue and it's going to have a problem now well not have a problem it's just continued and then it's gone okay i've finished but mainly it's all this stuff here in comparison to your normal gdb there's a lot more colorful and more meaningful sort of guides and information to be given by jeff so we can kind of play about with it and step through it if we do step it's uh, stepping through an entire block of stuff if we step instruction at that stepping a single assembly code instruction so so they're two different things and continuously so that's like continue where you carry on from where you are then if there's another breakpoint after that you've pressed continue it will stop at the next breakpoint otherwise it will just carry on until it finishes so if i was to run this again we hit the breakpoint if i just press continue so it does the hello world continues on and exits normally and everything's all good um so yeah that's pretty much of a muchness and we have jeff installed which is cool and i think that's enough really for a quick installation video it was a bit of overkill as always i went on to a whole rabbit hole of things but again have a look through the docs have a read through all the help files and everything else and have a play with jeff it's awesome okay Again, if you like the video and you like the platform that we're using and how we're doing, feel free to give a thumbs up to let us know that. Feel free to uh, drop some comments if there's anything you'd like to see, any um, tools you'd like to see installed or used, or if you'd like information on how to do something, let us know that too. Uh, and thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, do feel free if you want to keep up to date with everything and see what we're actually making uh, make sure that you subscribe and bash that sort of bell button there to kind of get the notifications you have a good one bye guys